I am begging everyone, can we all calm down about Carlos Rodon? You are Locked On Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making us your first listen every day. I'm Stacey Gotsoulias. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. On today's Locked On Yankees, I'll tell you about some roster moves, and we have some positive injury updates. Plus, who is more important to the lineup, and who's more important when it comes to returning to form? Anthony Rizzo or Giancarlo Stanton? But first, we're discussing the Carlos Rodon hullabaloo. It's one of my favorite words, along with kerfuffle. Rodon pitched on Wednesday. Was it great? No. Was it terrible? Also, no. (laughs) But some people had a very negative reaction to his outing. So we're going to go through everything. I have numbers from Baseball Savant. And we're just going to talk about what happened on Wednesday. So, pitched against the Rays. He gave up three runs on five hits in three innings. He walked one, struck out one. He threw 60 pitches on the nose. 38 of those pitches were strikes. Now, it didn't start off great. He gave up a first pitch home run. (laughs) Literally, the first pitch he threw. And in the fourth inning, he ended his outing by giving up a double and a home run to the last two batters. So he bookended his start with home runs. So that's not great, but he was fine in the middle between those two home runs. So people are just going a little crazy. So let's go through the numbers. Pitch breakdown, thanks to baseball savant. So he threw 26 four-seam fastballs. The velocity was down. Now that is a little concerning. He spoke about it after the game. I have quotes for you after we get through all the numbers. He was down 2.1 miles per hour from his last outing. He maxed out only at 94.8 on Wednesday. So that's a little concerning, but he did address that after the game. The first pitch home run off the bat of Yandy Diaz was on a 93.1 mile per hour fastball. It sat middle away, slightly away, but it was still middle. And then uh, the the home run that ended his outing, Palacios hit a home run on the sixth pitch of that at bat. So at least there wasn't another first pitch <laughs> home run, but it was another four seam fastball. But it was one of the harder ones he threw all day. It was measured at 94.6 miles an hour and it got too much of the plate. The double that he gave up to Ahmed Rosario right before that last home run was on a slider that was actually really in, sli- in slide. Sure, inside. So that I won't fault him with. The fastballs concerning, they took they got too much of the plate and they were hit for home runs. And also the double on that slider was also the sixth pitch of the at bat. He threw 18 sliders, six curveballs, five changeups, five of his new cutter. So he's working on that pitch. If you go by, if you go by those three batters, the first one and the last two, sure, it's an abysmal outing. But there were other things happening in the game that were positive. He spoke with Jack Curry after the game, and then he admitted the fastball wasn't where he wanted it to be, but that's what spring training games are for. He mentioned the cutter, that he got weak contact on it, because I believe uh, Randy Rosarena hit a ball on the cutter. That was a ground ball out, if I'm not mistaken. And he got a swing and a miss on that. He got two swings and misses on a slider. He also said to Curry and to the print reporters who were gathered after the game that when he's healthy, he's good. And that if he stays healthy, 2024 should be good for him and the Yankees. And that brings us to this. Read the headlines. This is how they reacted to a spring training outing by Carlos Rodon. Ugly. Abysmal. He's lacking confidence. You know, raises cause for concern. 
guys, really, it, it wasn't that bad of an outing. Because like I said, between those home runs, he was able to work into and out of trouble. And it wasn't that ugly. You know what was ugly? The last outing of the season that he had in 2023 in Kansas City when he gave up eight runs on six hits, couldn't get an out, and had to be taken out of the game before recording an out. That's an ugly start. What happened on Wednesday? No. He said it's one of those days that you've got to be able to pitch without the fastball and kind of use some other things. That was good to feel that in a game that no one really gives a bleep about because it doesn't matter. It's spring training. Exactly, Carlos. Thank you. Thank you for stating the obvious. It's spring training. Is it concerning that the fastball velocity was down? Probably, but it's still early enough for him to work on some things. And there are times in the regular season when guys' fastballs aren't working. Maybe the velocity is down. Maybe it's just not hitting where it's supposed to hit and they go to different pitches. This is why he's working on that cutter. So he can go to that if his four-seamer isn't working. It's just, it's just funny to me, the overreaction <laughs> of some of the people watching that game. And it wasn't just the beat writers who were like, I don't think it's the beat writers' fault too much because I think other people do the headlines. The people who are in charge of putting things up on the web come up with the headlines for the most part, although with the way journalism is changing these days, maybe the beat writers do have something to do with the headlines that they put up. Uh, Luis Terenz was catching Rodon, and he said that the cutter is a good pitch with good movement. I saw something interesting, interesting on Twitter from Chris Towers, who writes for CBS Sports. He said, in the first inning of his start today, Rodon's movement profile on his four seam and slider were both a little off. Nothing to panic about, but I do worry that experimenting with a cutter could mess up his feel for those other pitches. So that's something to look out for. But I still feel as if everyone's panicking too much. And I get it. Rodon had a terrible year in 2023. He will tell you that. He knows he had a terrible year. But he also wasn't healthy. He's healthy, as far as we know. And he's just building back up. So... I don't know. It feels like people are trying to find a negative angle to write about because right now, for the most part, things are positive in Yankees camp. There are minimal injuries, although now that I said that, I probably just jinxed them and someone will be injured on Thursday or today. Um, but it feels like people are trying to make drama where there is not drama. I'm not that worried about Carlos Rodon right now. I'm really not. I'm not. Today's outing didn't freak me out. I actually thought the first pitch home run was amusing because it was so quick. <laughs> it was so quick. I was like, wow, okay, well, that happened. Um, <laughs> but I'm not worried about him yet. I'm not. I'm happy he's healthy. He's building things back up. It's only March 7th. He has time to build things up. Now, if we get to the end of March, and we get to those exhibition games in Mexico, and he's still only throwing 93 miles an hour, then you can be worried. But when he got to camp, he was throwing 96, 97. So this may have just been an off day for him. Okay, before we move on to segment two, don't forget to reply to the pinned comment on our videos from Monday through Thursday. Although, um, confession, I forgot to put pinned comments on Tuesday and Wednesday, so just leave them under Monday and Thursday's videos. Or you can join the Locked On Yankees Insiders Club. The link is in the description. You'll get texts from me. You can text me questions. There's a 14-day free trial. We have a lot of fun there. You should join it. Coming up next, who's more important to the strength of the lineup? Anthony Rizzo or Giancarlo Stanton? Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV that provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. 
Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free, and that includes all of us at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels let you dive into all of the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, and cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit amazon.com slash locked on Fire TV. Welcome back. After you're done here, make sure to watch Locked On Sports today. It's the Locked On Network's 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and it's really cool. You just put it on and do whatever you want around the house while you have it on. You can clean the house. You can exercise. You can work because I know a lot of people work from home, and it's great. You can have it on in the background if you want to. That's Locked On Sports today, streaming 24-7 on YouTube. Okay, so... I'm going to preface this by saying I got this idea from Twitter. It's a clip from Talking Yanks of John Boy and Jake, I believe, talking about this because I found it so interesting, the response to it. Okay. So this clip was circulating around Yankees Twitter on Wednesday. I believe it was put up on Tuesday. And I think I saw it late because I saw it in my For You tab instead of my following tab. And that's, I usually see things like 18 hours later in that tab. So I hadn't seen it. And what I found interesting was that John Boy and Jake said something on the show that was nearly universally, not panned, but most people responding to it were disagreeing with what they said. So they posed the question, who would you rather return to form? Anthony Rizzo or Giancarlo, Giancarlo Stanton? They both said Rizzo. The response to that clip was overwhelmingly for Stanton. Not just people I knew on Twitter, but the replies to the original tweet with the clip. Stanton, 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 Stanton. I, was, I couldn't believe it because... Fellow Yankee fans, you can vouch for this. We don't, there are a lot of things we don't agree on, <laughs> but that was something that most people agreed on. Look, I love Anthony Rizzo. I love his presence on the team. I love what he brings to the team. But between those two guys, I think I'd rather have the dude that once hit 59 home runs in a year and who can go on a home run streak and really affect how the team performs. You know, don't forget that the Yankees have that crazy record when Giancarlo Stanton and Aaron Judge home run together, hit home runs in the same game together. Will he bounce back? Hmm. You know, will he return to form? This is Stanton. I don't know. He's not looking too good so far in spring training. But as I said, with the Rodon stuff, it's only March 7th. He has a few weeks to make adjustments to figure out what's working, what's not working. You know, he did hit a ball today that the second baseman for the Rays ran from almost the other side of second base to catch the ball nearly by the foul line <laughs> in uh, between right fielder and first baseman. And so it was a really good catch, and it could have been a bloop-ish single for um, Stanton. So... He is making occasional contact, but he just hasn't gotten into a groove yet. Again, it's early. And like I said with Rodon, if Stanton is still coming to bat at the end of March and flailing away and not making good contact, then you should worry about him. Now, obviously, if I had a choice, I would like for both guys to return to form. Rizzo's looking good so far in spring training. He's hitting the ball well, seeing the ball well. I'm not really worried about Rizzo. I'm not. I'm more worried about Stanton. But out of those two guys, the one that you would prefer to return to form has to be Stanton. 
again, because of the power aspect of his game. But I just thought it was interesting, the response to that question. Like I said, I've never seen so many Yankee fans agree on something. It was really shocking and surprising. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, okay. Um, you know, today's game was interesting, aside from the Rodon stuff. The lineup, one through seven, was pretty much what you would want it to look like for opening day. DJ, Soto, Judge, Rizzo, Glaber, Stanton, Verdugo. And then Volpe wasn't playing and um, Wells wasn't playing, right? Because uh, Terenz was playing. I was going to say switch Stanton and Verdugo, but I kind of like Verdugo at seven. And I know a lot of people want to see Glaber lead off. But, you know, Glaber hit a home run today. He has that power stroke in him. And I feel like behind guys like Soto Judge Rizzo, it's better to have Glaber in the number five spot instead of switching him and DJ. I also wouldn't want Stanton to be moved into the five if they move DJ to six. You know, but that lineup, that one through seven actually looked pretty good. Now, DJ's another guy to look out for um, to see if he gets things going in the spring because it feels like Aaron Boone might be married to the DJ in the leadoff spot lineup so far but again there are many different things that he can do and play around with Verdugo can lead off um you know Glaber can lead off occasionally but I don't want Boone to move him into that position permanently because he's a good power hitter you want someone to set up Soto and Judge and actually the Yankees did a pretty good job of that today um they got some guys on base they didn't score but it was good to have guys like Soto Judge Rizzo. Like that's a right now, Soto Judge Rizzo and Glaber, that foursome right there. <laughs> that's that's pretty tough for opposing pitchers to navigate. Also, I love the left right, left right. I've spoken about this on the show a few times. It's been so long. It feels like it's been so long since we've had that <laughs> combo where you can put lefties and righties back to back with each other and it's not so right-handed heavy. Yeah, I can I like that that lineup. Let me know what you think about that particular order. DJ, Soto, Judge, Rizzo, Glaber, Stanton, Verdugo. Let me know what you think about that. Um I like it. Again, if DJ doesn't pick things up, you can move him out of the leadoff spot, but there are other guys who you can put in there. I don't think Soto is one of them. Don't suggest Soto. I, I saw someone in our chat on Monday night when, or no, Sunday night when Monday's episode premiered, someone said that they wanted Soto in the leadoff spot. I love Soto at two, Judge three and Rizzo four. That's a great threesome right there. So let me know what you think about the lineup. And let me know what you think about the Rizzo Stanton thing. Who do you think or who do you want to return to form more, Rizzo or Stanton? Let me know in the comments. Okay, coming up next, we have spring training odds and ends. We have some injury updates, positive ones, and some roster moves. PrizePix is North America's largest daily fantasy sports platform. It's the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS because it's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Now they have a new feature on the app, Demons and Goblins. Demon picks are marked in red. They're scary, but they bring you more money if you win. The goblin picks are marked green because they're designed to keep you in the green and allow you to land consistent victories. Now, the payout is less than a demon pick, but your chances of keeping your winning streak alive 
are higher. If you're into the NBA, you can pick more than or less than on everything from three-pointers made to turnovers committed. And for spring training baseball, you can pick more than or less than on pitcher strikeouts and first inning runs. Hey, if you uh, you could have bet on Rodon to give up a first inning run and you probably would have won. So download the app today and enter code locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, that's code locked on MLB, all one word and all in lowercase letters and get that first deposit match up to $100. Join prize picks today. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. <laughs> Welcome back to the final segment of today's Locked On Yankees. And we have some roster moves. Nothing too exciting, but yeah. Jeter Downs and Caleb Durbin infielders, along with outfielders Spencer Jones and Brandon Lockridge, were reassigned to minor league camp on Tuesday. And on Wednesday, catcher J.C. Escara, infielder T.J. Rumfield, and left-hander Tanner Tully were reassigned to minor league camp. Tully pitched the other day. Um, so, yeah, you know, it's minor moves. For minor league players going to minor league camp, but things are shaping up. Uh, and our injury updates, very exciting. I mentioned Tommy Canely, I believe, on Tuesday's show. He told reporters he doesn't expect to pitch until the first week of the regular season, so he will probably not be on the opening day roster. But don't be shocked if you see him within that first week of the season. And Jose Trevino will finally be seeing game action for the first time in spring training. It will happen this coming Sunday against the Braves. Earlier in the week, Boone had a target for either Wednesday or Thursday as a possibility for Trevino, but now it's Sunday and he will be catching Marcus Stroman on Sunday. So that'll be interesting. Uh, so yeah, two positive injury updates. We love those don't we? We don't love injuries so much, but we love <laughs> when the news about the injuries are positive. So it's mostly positive news coming out of Yankees camp. And I would just like to bookend what I was talking about in segment one. It feels as if people want things to be bad for the Yankees. And I don't know why. It might make more exciting headlines for the writers and the papers and might sell more papers. I know that when we do our titles for our videos, we try to grab people in by making it something that you want to watch. Uh, so something more exciting would make you want to watch Locked on Yankees. But <laughs> the worst thing you can say about the Yankees right now is that their spring training record isn't that great. That's basically it. And who cares? Because as Carlos Rodon said, it's spring training. The stats don't count. You just really are worried about guys staying healthy and guys who are working on things, working on the things they need to work on and staying healthy. We have Juan Soto on the Yankees. We get to watch him every day, or at least we will once the regular season begins and every game is broadcast, because right now not every game is broadcast. It's not as bad as it was last year. Last year, you know, the injuries started piling up and it just felt not great. And this year is so much better in that regard. Also, the vibes feel different. I said that on a Wednesday show. I like the vibes of this team. It was a rough year for them in 2023. They got some new guys to plug in and 2024 is already more positive. So can we all just keep, can we just stop, just stop blowing things out of proportion? Stop trying to make things worse. Let's all just be happy that things are mostly positive for the Yankees. That's all I want. That's all you should want. So on Thursday, the Yankees are playing the Tigers and Luke Weaver is getting the start. It's a 635 game tonight, Thursday. And on Friday, they are playing the Blue Jays, the day game. Oh, let me correct myself. Trevino is not catching Stroman. Stroman is pitching Friday. I got those two days mixed up. Sunday is TBD. We don't know who's pitching. We also don't know who's pitching on Saturday. So Stroman is pitching Friday against the Blue Jays, and he is matched up against Chris Bassett. Okay, and that's an afternoon game. It'll be on the Yes app uh, because they're playing in Dunedin. And Sunday's game, where Trevino is making his spring training debut, will be on Yes, so you'll be able to watch Trevi in his first game. So that's good. 
One more time, don't forget to join the Locked On Yankees Insiders Club. There's a link in the description below and a 14-day free trial. You get texts from me and you can text me questions for Fan Mail Friday or just questions if you have them. And speaking of Fan Mail Friday, today's the last day for submissions. So get your questions in either by leaving them under the pinned comment below or by joining the Insiders Club. And if you do, you'll get priority for Fan Mail Friday. So there you go. So that's going to do it for this edition of Locked On Yankees. I'm Stacey Gotsoulias. Thank you for watching, and I will see you tomorrow. Thank you.